Hello, friends, and happy Saturday. Cyber here with another Darkest Dungeon How to Use guide. Um, I just want to say real quick, thanks for tuning in, and don't forget to hit the like button um, and share this with a friend if you think they'll enjoy it. Uh, thanks everybody for your support. I really appreciate it. If you would like to help support the channel more, uh, go to patreon.com slash master or just subscribe here on the channel and tune in. Uh, that helps massively. All right. Uh, let's get down to business. All right. That song is stuck in my fucking head. Uh, today we are going to cover and take a deep dive into how to use the Corsair. Um, the Corsair's canon name is Shing, I believe. Uh, the credits, let's get started on those real quick. Uh, Shay did the coding and sound design. Flissy Fox did the sprite art. Anonymous Koala did the skill icon art, the trinket art, and the animations. Caxon did the FX art. Moon Kanan, the upgrade icon art. Zap did the promotional art. Turk MC did the comic. Sketch did the skins. Ebony Betty and Cat did the writing. Seal and Aiden did the additional animation work. Uh, Methusiel did the French translation. And 54NBB did additional localization. Um, overall, let's see. Let's just dive right into her stats, get into the meat and potatoes here. Um, her max HP at opening resolve is 19. Uh, and this progresses all the way to a 35 at max resolve. Um, this is low. It's not super low. Um, it's the same HP as a Jester has growing up into the the high levels. Um, but it's it's only barely above Antiquarian stats. So she's a little a little squishy. You just you got to protect her a little bit, but it's almost not imperative because she has other ways of defending herself um, depends on how you kit her out uh, her dodge is actually a 15 at opening resolve and it progresses to a 35 uh, this is the same as the jester again you're gonna see that a few more times um, it's the top of the line dodge uh, in the game especially compared to the vanilla characters so she is um, hella shifty in that regard uh, her prot is a 0%, very standard. Uh, speed value starts at a 7 and progresses all the way to a 9 at max resolve. It goes up the normal increments. Um, it goes up to an 8 at third level and a 9 at final level. The accuracy is very standard, plus 0. Um, no plus or minus there. Her critical chance is a 5 that progresses all the way to a 9 at max resolve. Um, this is very high. This is the same uh, crit as a Highwayman or a Hellion. It's not the best in the game, but it's damn close. Um, the damage, uh, it starts at a 5 to 9 at opening level, and it progresses to an 8 to 14 at the final resolve level. Um, it's, it's a little hard to classify. It's above backline damage. Um, I guess if I had to settle on a, a title for this damage, it's probably what I would consider average. It's the same damage as a Man at Arms the whole way up. Um, so she's very capable of doing damage, but she's going to depend on her own kit and buffs and trinkets to provide that extra edge. All right. Let's dive into her combat skills real quick here. Um, before we really go into them in depth, her attacking skills, you'll notice, are almost exactly evenly split. Actually, I think they are exactly evenly split between melee and ranged. Um, so you, you've got some versatility to her, and you'll also notice that a lot of these move her around. Or move the enemy around the battlefield. So she's very, um... Uh, what's the word? Battlefield control kind of character. Um, so let's just start at the top. Our first ability is a thousand cuts. It is usable from the first, second, and third rank, and it can target the first, second, or third rank opponent. It's a melee attack that moves her forward one space, has an accuracy bonus of 85, and a crit mod of 4. It does full damage, 
Uh, so this is her meat and potatoes attack move with melee. Um, it's pretty standard. I use this on like almost every kit. Um, you can probably make a good kit without it, but I, I don't very often. At least I haven't yet. Her second ability is Getaway. It is usable from the first, second, or third rank, and it moves her back one space. Um, it has a cooldown of two rounds, so you can't use this again for two rounds. Um, she buffs herself, 10 dodge, and she adds 40% damage while stealthed for, I believe it's a three round buff. Um, and on a dodge, she will stealth herself. So this is kind of a good way to set up a uh, one if she's targeted, dodge and stealth, and she's not in danger for another round or so, I want to say. Um, it's a good way to get dodge, and it's a good way to get damage on for her next turn. So it's a good setup move. I use this a ton. Her third ability is Rope Dart. It's usable from the back ranks, from rank 3 and 4, and it's usable on the opposing rank 3 and 4. It is a ranged attack that moves her forward 2. So this will catapult her into the front ranks. Um, it has an accuracy base of 90 and a damage modifier of negative 66%. So you're going to do about a third of normal damage with this, and you're going to catapult to the front, you're going to pull them back with 100% base and bleed them with 100% base for two points a round for three rounds. So this is a good um, this is a good moving the party uh, trick on the opponent and it'll also set up a bleed. So if you got any synergy in mind with those things that prioritize hitting the back ranks, this can be a good move for you. Her fourth ability is called Face Me. It is a ranged attack that is usable in any rank and you can target any foe with it. It moves her forward one, it has an accuracy base of 100, it does no damage, but what it does is it sets up a, a, uh, a unique debuff on the opponent that they will take more damage from a thousand cuts and they will take more bleed amount damage from disembowel. And what it does for you is it will mark yourself and add 10 dodge. So this is like kind of like a unique fight me one on one kind of situation and it will prioritize them fighting you and you will do hella bonus damage with your melee attacks against that target. Her fifth ability is called Disembowel. It's usable only from the first rank, and it can target enemies in the first or second rank. It is a melee attack that moves her back to. Has an accuracy base of 85, a damage modifier of negative 50%, and a crit mod of plus 6%. It will inflict bleed on the target at 100% base for four points a round for three rounds. So you'll find that if you do this over time, if you do this on turn one against somebody um, that you know you're not going to kill regardless, you'll actually do more damage output with this over three turns than you will with one a thousand cuts. Uh, I find that I use this only really when there's a high prot guy I'm targeting, and that's just to get through that, that damage resistance barrier. So. Uh, it's very useful. I use it on like all my melee kits, but I find I gravitate to a thousand cuts far more. Um, her sixth ability is Oil Urn. Um, it is a ranged attack usable from the second, third, or fourth rank, and you can target any opponent with it. Uh, it has an accuracy base of 95, a damage modifier of negative 95%, and it has a knockback to it of 100% base, so you can knock the opponent back with this. This has a cooldown of one round, so you can't use it on your very next turn. Um, and it debuffs the target for minus four speed, minus 10 dodge, and it will, uh, that target will receive more damage from Firecracker by 200%. Uh, does that go up quickly or slowly? It goes up kind of quickly. So you'll find that, that firecracker damage will balloon on that target from there, 
And it makes sense, because you're just basically chucking an oil urn at them and just coating them in that flammable liquid. And the final combat ability is Firecracker. It is a ranged attack, usable from ranks 2, 3, or 4, and can target enemy ranks 2, 3, or 4. It has an accuracy base of 90, has a damage modifier of negative 66%, and a crit modifier of plus 2%. It will shuffle the target and debuff the target for minus 10 accuracy at 100% base. These have some very unique synergy and there's even um, a trinket we'll get into that fuses with these kind of rather nicely. Um, so if you don't want to run a melee kit or if you want to run a weird trick on some, some backline foes, this is not a bad setup. Alright, let's jump into her camping skills real quick and get them out of the way. Uh, her default, uh, Encourage, Wound Care, Pep Talk, they're all standard. Um, the first unique one she has is No Quarter. It is a time cost 4 ability. It targets the party. You get a plus 8% crit for 4 battles and an additional plus 4% crit versus marked targets for 4 battles. So, if you're in a marked comp, Getting an extra 12% crit on everybody in your party. That's pretty dope. I'm not gonna lie. Like, even if they don't have marked synergy themselves, if you're focusing down marked targets and they're not doing... They don't have a... When I say marked synergy, I mean they don't have a bonus damage against marked. Just the mere fact of getting a 12% crit against marked for those four battles... Um, you're gonna see a lot of one-hit kills. I mean, even if you're not using a Musketeer or an Arbalist, per se. Uh, let's say you get a Man-in-Arms out there and you just crush people with this mace. You're still gonna get a lot of one-shot kills with this bonus crit. Uh, her, her second uh, custom camping skill is On Your Feet. It has a time cost one. It has... you focus on one companion and you add 15 accuracy to them, and there's a 75% chance that you will also stress them out for 10 stress. Her uh, third unique camping skill is Sail by the Stars. It's a time cost three. You target yourself. Uh, it adds 15% to your scouting chance for four battles, and adds another 15% scouting chance in the condition that your torch is below 50. So if you're going in a low-lit dungeon, adding 30% to your scouting chance uh, for the next leg of the dungeon, that's pretty That's pretty formidable. Uh, that's better um, than the, the Ancestor's map, technically, but it's probably actually really comparable to that uh, at, at the end of things. And it's actually still really useful um, outside of low-lit conditions, but I find I would probably only really use the three points on this uh, in the situation of running in low light. Her final camping skill is Tall Tail. It's a time cost for uh, you target yourself and you add three speed for the next four battles and all your companions uh, recover with a 66% chance recover 10 stress. Um, so this is a decent way to take a little bit of the edge off of the stress of the rest of the party while also giving yourself a little uh, pick-me-up as far as initiative in the next combats go. Okay, uh, just briefly, um, we're going to go over her crit effect. Uh, she buffs her dodge when she gets a crit. So if you confuse, let's say you set up with this camp, you get a hella bonus crit, you're using a lot of thousand cuts and disembowel, which each have bonus crit, um, and her default goes up to a 9 at normal level, so you're getting a shit ton of crits, and every time you do, you get bonus dodge. Uh, so she is going to set herself up for a really high dodge stat in most situations. Uh, so she is a formidable frontline, but not in the conventional way. She's gonna, uh, like how a lot of people want to trinket out uh, their highwayman where he will like take all the incoming attacks, repost shit, and dodge most of the incoming damage. 
Uh, she's really formidable at that, minus the repost. But she will slowly uh, just chop down the enemy like they were a tree and just be the last woman standing. So as far as um, party compositions go, or um, synergy with other, other teams, uh, if you have other characters in mind you want to use that provide stealth for their allies, or um, teams that shuffle themselves around a lot, she focuses really well with those. Um, or even other classes that give extra initiatives, extra turns to their allies, uh, she would benefit from that immensely as well. Um, the stealth would, when set up with this, be really good. Uh, as long as you have this buff still active at all times, when you get that bonus stealth to proc, then every attack you're gonna do and unleash is just gonna do hell to damage. Um, and if you can get that extra initiatives, the, the, probably the best thing to do with those two turns is on turn one, give her two initiatives, and that way you can just go get away, and face me. And you just pick and point at and mark the first target you want your team to attack, while also uh, using getaway. It'll give her hella damage bonus against that target on the next round, and she's got a shit ton of dodge stacked up already, and when she does dodge, she will be stealthed and ready to go. Let's breeze onto the quirks. I locked Slugger on mine. Um, as far as what type of damage you're going to um, limit yourself to, I would not necessarily lock yourself into uh, melee or ranged unless you know exactly what that character is going to be doing. Uh, it's, it's way better, in my mind, to lock something like Warrior of Light on her or um, Lurker if you're going in the dark uh, because it'll just boost 10% damage to both types of attack as long as they're in that light condition. So I would do that more often. Uh, what I would definitely lock on her every time is dodge quirks. Uh, let's see. Accuracy, actually. Uh, especially melee accuracy. Uh, her melee accuracies are each a little below what I would consider a good accuracy at her level. She's got um, 85. What is that like? It's like the Hellion accuracy, so it's not missing a ton but it's a significant enough amount of chance to miss that it might get frustrating at times. Um, let's see, her, her unique trinkets. Just to shout out some of those. I do not have her very rare trinket yet. I've been trying to play enough, but I'm a busy dude. A couple that, that I want to mention. One is on the uh, version of her I'm going to send out on the mission here in a minute. Uh, the first one is Gunpowder Arrow. Uh, this is a firecracker shifting trinket. Uh, that that ability here that um, you can hit oil urn, boost its damage, and then just probably build up to a wrecking firecracker at the end, which I have not tried yet, but I'm I'm looking forward to. Uh, what this does is it adds three to the damage firecracker does, not not a percentage, just straight up adds three uh, to the minimum and the maximum, I assume. Um, but it does not debuff anymore, so that minus 10 accuracy is no longer attached. But on a ranged attack hit, it debuffs the target, and they will take 15% more crits from Firecracker. Now you factor that into Oil Urn. Well, that's the ranged attack you needed. So you hit him with this, or even with Face Me, actually, because that's a ranged attack. And then either one of those will uh, add a crit received from Firecracker. And then it just goes off. Uh, another one to mention here is Aquamarine Hook Swords. If you are moving, if you're going to be pulling the, or shifting the party around a lot, uh, this is a good one. It's especially good if you just really want crits. 30% um, move skill chance is going to help you a decent amount if you're repositioning enemies. The 12 crit is always useful and on her uh, even more because you can just uh, boost her dodge with those. Uh, you cannot crit versus bleeding, and on an attack crit, you bleed them two points around for two rounds. Uh, so as long as you're not using um, disembowel to cause bleeding, basically what this does is it will um, 
It will hit until it crits, and once it crits, it'll bleed, but that target won't receive any crits from you anymore. So it's kind of uh, penalizing you, but at the same time, it's it's actually diversifying what she does. Uh, so I find that actually really beneficial and kind of uh, unique in that regard. All right, let's get the party ready. I don't know where I'm going yet. I know I need a medium or a medium quest. No, I'm sorry. I'm going on an easy quest here. So let's go take. Uh, well, I'll take a short one. Fuck it. But before we go, uh, the other trinket I wanted to point out is bottled junk, the rare trinket for her, because it's a uh, it's a dodge boosting trinket. So it'll give her 12 dodge, and it also gives her 25% more healing received while stealthed, which for me is like the optimal build for her. Uh, and crits received is the negative there. You're going to take more crits when you get hit, which shouldn't happen a ton. All right, so let's show you kind of how she works here. I don't really care what I'm grabbing. Let's just get everything. The idea behind this party is Senua is going to cause everybody to be stealthed on turns where she wouldn't otherwise be stealthed. The smell of rotting fish is almost unbearable. Almost unbearable. Alright, let's see if we can go find some fishmen. You're not fishmen at all. All right, let's get started with that getaway. Okay, so she took she actually took a hit that time, which is very unfortunate. Let's see, what am I gonna do here? Well, I want to set up a repose. Damn. There we go. There we go. The stealth. Alright, stun you. Just do some crowd control. So stealthy. So stealthy. Their formation is broken. Maintain the offensive. Alright, girl. Do this bonus damage. Let's see, plus sixty percent damage while stealth for two rounds. But ciao! Massive, massive damage. All right, she stayed stealthed. I do not use, need to use headcase again. So let's get rid of one of these corpses so that everyone can reach. Oh man, didn't even get rid of it. Well, fuck it. Let's just focus you down. Oh, and you do one too little damage, son of a. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. Let's focus fire this guy. Just get him out of the way. As the fiend falls, oh, the death. The fiend hope blossoms. The death. All right. The stealth lasted two rounds. Annihilated. Every time she dodges, she gets an additional round of stealth. So, uh, you, f you find that a lot of these cleaving through your party attacks are actually going to really benefit her a ton. Uh, it's pretty tough that way. Actually, why am I even continuing this direction? Just wasting time. Alright, next fight. Let's do this shit. The match is struck. A blazing star is born. Uh, hit him with the stale. Now another trinket I'm using on her, um, I don't have the anymore, there's this, uh, stealth cloak, uh, god, what is it, it's from the, the roaming weird boss, I can't remember the name of it, son of a bitch. One of the mods is a roaming boss, but it also has a, uh, trinket in it, that will, after you hit with an attack, give you a 20% chance to, uh, stealth yourself. I would recommend using that on her. Um, she's pretty good with that. It also adds, I think, two to your speed. But the one I do have on her is 
um, I think it's returning right now. Yeah. This one I'm making for the Magus class. It's a runestone trinket that will, on attack, self-stealth. 25% chance. So that that I find, uh, those kind of trinkets that will stealth her when she hits with an attack, um, actually allow her to reuse all that bonus stealth damage a bit more. Uh, I wonder how this works. Well, uh, it's a bag, and you open it. That's usually how a bag works. All right, final fight coming up. Another mariner. I don't have trinkets. Another to misfortune. Okay, you know, let's um, haven't used those yet. Let's set up. I only use them up on the third rank. Getaway brings me back, but that one brings me forward. All right, let's set these up, but move her back in the ranks. That should allow me to use them, as long as I stall a little bit in this battle to make sure I can get there. All right, let's set up an oil urn. It has some knockback, so... Well, let's see if I can wipe out this guy. On turn two. Man, those debuffs are crippling. Minus six speed, minus 15 dodge, and a whole bunch of damage from uh, Firecracker. I can't wait to see what that turns into. All right, let's um, try and wipe you out. Son of a bitch. That's okay. Continue the onslaught. Destroy. This guy's a pain in the ass, but we'll figure it out. No! That's not the guy! Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch! I don't even Why would you guard him? Out of out of your options. Why would you do so? How long does that stay on? Two two rounds. One on the firecracker though? Oh no. Oh no, man. Well, that's dumb. I wonder. I mean, that's that's dumb. That's dumb. I really wanted to show it off. Uh, well, that didn't work out. I had no way to like guarantee it. Whoa! Why did that happen, yo? Fuck. I don't know why Senua Sprite did that. Okay, dokie. Well... You don't have that anymore. It's sad. It's a sad day, really. It's a sad day, really. So I'll just set it up on you. Fucker is so defensive right now. Okay, let's get some heals, and I have to continue this dungeon even after the video, so might as well. Well, I can get the firecracker on somebody. Let's see what it does. Press this advantage. Oh yeah, that's a one-hit KO. No that's a one-hit KO, all right. Stop it, you big old meanie. Great is the weapon that cuts on You have own. one HP. <sighs> For anyone watching my Let's Play, that happens all the time. The the 1 HP crumbles. luck rolls are abundant. Well, uh, that's really all the time I, I can afford to spend on this uh, today with you guys, but I, I hope you uh, enjoy the Corsair, and uh, check it out. I highly recommend it. It's a fun class, and she's dodgy as hell. 
Thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and leave a like on the video. Leave a comment if you feel like it. Uh, let's see, I got the normal Wednesday Let's Play coming up next week. I've got another class guide coming up Saturday. I don't know yet what it's going to be. However, there is going to be a, um, a special surprise video tomorrow on celebration of my birthday and the birthday of um, a very special class to me. So uh, stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. Stay frosty.